Well, hello. Man, I bet my voice is nice and nice and loud. Nice and nice and girthy. Turn that down just a smidge. Just just a touch. Just a touch. Alright. Here we are. Uh, real quick, let me get the hellos out of the way. Hello, hello. Hello. What's up, Tay? Dr. Apocalypse, Divine Providence. How are y'all? How are y'all? What's going on? Uh, Dexter. Hmm, girthy, yeah. Alright. <clears throat> Intro. Settled. Out of the way. No distractions. About to just jump right in. Because this is meant to be a thing that people can watch on YouTube and enjoy for the time being, you know, further along to come. So, welcome back everybody. My name is Gamma Trap, one word. And today we are going to be talking about charcoal. And uh, charcoal-like techniques, charcoal-like texture brushes, the right brushes to use. I'm going to be using, only using default Procreate brushes. This is going to be in Procreate. Uh, these techniques, however, also still apply in whatever art program you have, which is very useful. And I try to always make sure that all my tutorials follow along that same kind of road to where it's accessible to whatever tool you got. So as long as your program... Photoshop, etc., whatever, has texture brushes that you can either get, download, or has on them. Uh, and it doesn't even need to be texture brushes, but it, it definitely does help if it's texture brushes because what we're trying to recreate is the sort of gritty, almost dirty uh, look of charcoal, kind of like how this is. <clears throat> um, now, the whole way we're going to go about this is, is pretty structured. So I, I meant this to be sort of a, a discussion, sort of like a lecture, almost like you would uh, actually get at an actual um, college or higher education kind of course. I've done talks uh, with students all the time, and I figured I should actually translate that into a video at some point. So here we are. Uh, I'll have timestamps below after the stream has been posted into like a real video. So if you or anybody else would like to come back here, or if you're new here, just watching the video after the stream, uh, you can click on the timestamps to hit these different sections. I want this to be as informative and helpful and streamlined as possible. Cool? Cool. So right now what we got is just a quick introduction of what's kind of possible in the realm of these kind of charcoal-like textures and, and charcoal-like techniques. Right now you'll see... Uh, this picture, and we're going to be going through some of my pictures. Obviously, I drew them all. Um, and all of these pictures started in Procreate in the charcoal-like um, format, in the, in the charcoal, with charcoal techniques. And I started doing this a few, I want to say six months ago, seven, something like that. And I've just fallen kind of madly in love with it. And I, I've been exploring it and, and checking it out here ever since because that's when I really started checking out procreate uh, i've been doing it a little bit in photoshop and i was testing out a lot of different techniques there and i've got a pretty good idea on how to do it pretty pretty good there but procreate's a little special in how they handle the behavior of their brushes and again i'll probably make a stream and video about how to do all this stuff in photoshop later but right now this whole thing's in procreate so all these pieces started with a charcoal base and when i say base i mean the very beginning, the very conception of these pieces all got started with the charcoal techniques I'm going to talk about later on in the, in the stream or the video. And uh, now you'll know, like this one, for example, has some color to it. And I'm going to show you one that has a lot of color in it later. Uh, but when you start, black and white's pretty much going to be your go-to. Because in charcoal, you kind of want to recreate the feeling and the look of having a, a charcoal stick or or or, or what they call a lump, <laughs> you know, a thing of charcoal, because the whole point of this is to recreate, you know, when you when you take a charcoal and you scratch it on paper or canvas, it has that kind of like gritty bit to it, and um, it you can make fantastic things with it, and in, in, with the charcoal techniques, you've also got. You can kind of erase with charcoal, which is great, uh, and you can kind of and you smudge with charcoal. Smudging is huge in charcoal, uh, so that's uh, drawing, erasing, and smudging are going to be the three biggest tools you'll have at your kind of disposal here. But later on, because this is digital, 
we are also able to incorporate colors and stuff afterwards and how to incorporate colors on a charcoal piece is going to be another topic of discussion hopefully we'll get to that um like here here's what i was talking about this one has a lot of color in it i started this one just like the other ones black and white just the black brush doing the values scratching in the textures working on the on the piece in the finding the right form finding right you know all of that trying to make sure it communicates well so it's it's really interesting i've been kind of falling in love lately with how you can recreate a more classic traditional technique and classic traditional style of work in digital 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 um for example layers we have layers in digital might as well utilize them but i i try to use as few layers as possible uh so here's the demonstration pieces so we'll get into this this is going to be slightly blinding warning it's a white background <laughs> okay so here's the big key points we're going to hit first and we'll probably get into questions and stuff a little later but right now we're keeping this kind of streamlined and hopefully the stream holds up pretty well throughout the entire stream line so first we're going to handle brushes and just the easiest default brushes in procreate we're not going to have any new ones we're not going to be making any we're just going to be using the brushes that are in procreate that you get with the program and then there's uh the the the, the mindset of sculpting which is might sound weird, but when I get into it, you'll probably, you'll, you'll figure it out pretty quick. And then the next one is the biggest thing you got to worry about is value control because you are dealing with values. You're not really dealing with color right now. You can deal with color later, but right now in the, in the charcoal phase, you're going to be doing mostly value work and, and uh, value control. And that's pretty intense. And the bottom one says chaos. And there's a reason for that. I don't know if any of y'all have seen any of my other videos, but uh, I'm a big big uh proponent or what's it supporter i don't know um of there's a hair on my screen of start a piece with a idea in mind but you don't quite know what you want to see yet and what we do to bring that out is use chaos and chaos is actually really 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 useful when you're dealing with these texture brushes because they're kind of hard to control and those are the best in my opinion charcoal or just texture brushes in general. Brushes that are really difficult to control until you like really kind of iron them out. So one thing we probably won't be dealing with any is, is any line work. And this might scare some people. I understand that. I know you love to draw. Drawing is your big thing. You might you might actually use line work in your regular like traditional charcoal stuff, which I would actually suggest you do because you don't have as as much flexibility with digital. So doing some line work down just to get the basic idea of what you kind of want. Then adding charcoal and traditional works great. Works great. Same with, same with painting, by the way. But here, we don't really need it. You could totally do it. So you finding your own way. I don't want to influence anybody's style one way or the other. I'm just trying to give you some information so that you can, you know, use it however you need to make the piece that you've got envisioned in your head or what you want to bring out into the world. So first thing we're going to talk about is brushes. Now, these are my my go-to charcoal brushes. And there's you know, my pencil working. Cool. I used that one. All right. So there's Old Beach and Nicole Roll and I might be pronouncing these because they've got or Procreate makes some strange name things. Uh, Plimsoll and Larapuna. Now, Old Beach is my biggest, and I listed it top left, which is where I come from, where we start up reading. That's my biggest baby. My biggest baby. That's the one that, that I start almost everything. And I'll, I'll make a demonstration here later, and you'll see I'm going to start with Old Beach. Now, the reason I love Old Beach so much, I love my Old Beach is because if you look at it, it's gritty, it's it's heavy texture, and it's and it looks crazy. It looks so like how can you draw with that kind of kind of way, which is exactly what we want. That's actually huge. So what's great about this, and I'm not I don't mind about 
messing this up because I've already recorded it. So what you got to do is make sure that you are using, when you first get started, you want to be using the same brush and eraser, the, sa the same. Like for example, my brush is Old Beach, my eraser is Old Beach. It's It helps keep the texture kind of uniform. So when you erase with this, e even erasing, it's crazy. It's chaos, chaos itself. When you draw, you draw, you can draw light. Now, here's one of the reasons I prefer Procreate. You'll notice the edges. Look at the edges here. Oh, screw that. There we go. Look at the edges here. It's got this weird dark line, like an outline. So if I draw just one slash down, it's got an outline. But if I draw, I'm going to draw a little lighter. There we go. If I draw, but I, I, I push it. Notice that bottom line is moving further and further back down. That bottom line is, is pushing farther away. And that's one of the reasons I love Procreate because that's one of the behaviors that they've implemented in their brushes. It's really hard to recreate that particular thing with um, Photoshop or I don't know. I haven't really messed with Cry to Mice or Autodesk Sketchbook. Um, uh, Bruce, remember that question? I'll get back to that in a bit, okay? Um, but so far with Procreate, the way they handle their brushes is... It's so intuitive, it saves you a lot of time, and it, in it incorporates a lot of chaos. Which again, is it's a bit like wet paint, yeah, exactly. It's, 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 you know, chaos is extraordinarily helpful in creating these kind of gritty texture pieces. Now, Nico Rule, or painting Nico Rule. Nice. I'm gonna hold down the eraser and it switches automatically to the same brush we're using. Nico rule is a bit more structured. You'll notice the preview is a rectangle. When you draw, it's a rectangle, those hard lines. This is usually my refinement brush. Whenever I create a chaotic piece, I usually refine it with Nico rule. But one of the reasons I love it so much is when you look at it, I'm gonna make it big right here. Ignore the garage door beneath me. <laughs> You'll see like the super gritty, almost like stone or concrete it's got a really cool kind of texture to it that's one of the reasons i prefer this as my refinement brush so if i'm making a piece of armor and i want to like make a sharp cut in the armor like not necessarily like a groove but like where the armor of the breastplate plate ends or the arm piece or whatever i'll i'll, I'll draw it with old beach and then i'll refine it with nico rule just so it can maintain that really gritty surface. See, like even if I want to draw like a line, that line still has that that that, that hatching, that that crunchy bit to it, and that's really helps you know sort of sell the illusion of chaos and, and all that stuff. And yeah, uh, if if I get to a, a thing and y'all have been here for a while, feel free to answer each other's questions. That saves me a ton of time. I appreciate that. Next one is Lara Puna. Now, Lara Puna, or Puna, however you want to say it, Puna, <laughs> is in artistic, right below Old Beach. And I don't use, usually use this as a brush. It can be a great brush. A great brush. I mean, look at this. It has, no, stop, I'm starting to zoom in here. It has almost a canvas texture underneath it by default, which is its whole purpose but it also kind of blends with any of the values and colors beneath it it's a blending brush so if i press down you'll notice it's it, if i like see it right there it's 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 meshing things really strangely and it's it's blending the stuff beneath it which is very very interesting, very awesome, very great, very cool. But I use this as my smudge brush. So I'll draw something with Old Beach, and then I'll go in there with a Lar with a Larapuna smudge brush. I'll make it nice and big or small, however, and I'll and I'll use this to help smooth out some of the detail. I'll smudge some in. I'll smudge some back. 
and the chaos and you might be watching this going oh my god please i can't that's that's crazy i can't control that that's the whole point just watch just enjoy it and try it out for yourself and maybe you'll find you love it and we'll get to the chaos again like i said a little later that's part of the curriculum so lara puna or puna is my go-to smudge brush i use a couple of them like literally a couple like two uh, but Laura Poon is my, my, my big one. Next is Plimsoll. Also an artistic. Now, Plimsoll's a little weird. They're all a little weird. They all have their own sort of behaviors and characteristics and personalities. But Plim, that's... that's Alright, so the first thing you'll notice about Plimsoll is when you zoom in, this has a strong, strong canvas texture. That is the most prominent feature. And even when you're erasing, it maintains that canvas texture. Now you'll notice whenever I draw on here, it almost looks like it's like bubbling on the areas I've already drawn. You see that? And it stops whenever I stop. That's because it's incorporating extra behavior after I've already covered and gone over an area to keep it random, to make sure it fits, and to get rid of any railroad tracking, which is a term for when you can obviously see a texture repeats over and over again. So in Photoshop, for example, if you have a texture brush or a stamp brush, you'll see it railroad tracks a lot. But this has information ingrained in it to where it guarantees to pretty much never do that. And you know, like the, the bubbling might freak people out, but usually you're not like just constantly <laughs> constantly like slowly dragging your brush around but this incorporates plenty of chaos on its own despite the fact that it has a very structured you'll notice these hard lines here let me just watch this all right so we're gonna make it nice big splotchy bit right here add some erasing have some chaotic thing just have a shape Erase a bit, then we're gonna smudge with our Lara Puna. Lara Puna. And all of these things combined, with their, their powers combined, create amazing, amazing and beautiful effects that can be recreated and tried out. And I would I would encourage you while you're watching this, if you have it, uh, to try these brushes along with me. It really helps like you understand when sometimes like people have to like think really hard like ah oh, I can't really quite grasp that or maybe you're at work maybe you're at school who knows but when you get a chance try these out for yourself so again our brushes are old beach Nico roll or rule Larpuna and Plimsoll located old beach Larpuna and Plimsoll are in the artistic tab so you'll notice the blue one right here on the left they're all pretty much right next to each other. See, it's Plimsoll, Old Beach, Lara Puna. And Nico Roll is in the painting tab. Again, all of these are default brushes you could find uh, with the program by itself. So with that one out of the way, next, we're going to go back to Old Beach, my baby. Gotta love Old Beach. Next, we're gonna talk about sculpting. Now, obviously we're drawing, or painting, or charcoaling, or whatever it is you like to call it. Digital, digital art stuff. When you think about it, drawing, like when you're doing a line work and you're drawing like your favorite anime characters or whatever, comic book stuff, you're drawing and you're sort of almost like creating a, a, a window to a, a thing or event or you're trying to think in 3D space. With, when you don't have line work, when you just use big, crazy brushes, not that one, that one, there we go. Just big, crazy brushes, you have to think of it almost like you're sculpting. When you put a brush down, when you, when you brush, it's almost like putting on another layer of, of clay. And when you erase, you're sort of like scooping that clay off. And when you do, and you refine the thing, you are almost like you're you're, you're really indenting and, and pushing in like the eye sockets for the skull and whatever in your painting. And 
I said skull, that kind of brings you to the point. You don't have to do, like, I make horror artwork. A lot of it. I make cute stuff, too. I would like to say, I do make cute things. I draw nice, pretty things that are vibrant and happy. But, having said that, <laughs> I do a lot of gritty, <laughs> a, lo a lot of gritty horror-like artwork. And charcoal is useful for a, a, a multitude of things. And just when I'm drawing, you're probably going to see me draw some, some gnarly stuff. And so just keep that in mind. So sculpting. Every time you draw, it gets darker and darker in value because you're adding more layers of ink or charcoal. But think of it almost like, like I said, you're, you're, you're scooping clay up every time you erase and you're putting more clay down every time you draw. And that will sort of help you refine any shape or idea that you have going forward. Because when you're, when you're thinking almost in terms of sculpting, when you put stuff down, you take stuff away, what you're really doing is you're refining shapes and values. And also, you might notice I, I changed my brush size a lot. And uh, I do that on everything. Photoshop, Procreate, doesn't matter. I I have, when, it, when Photoshop, I got one hand on my keyboard, one hand on my brush, and I'm just constantly. And it just helps me work nice and fast. It's just a, a preference of mine. Now we're going to take a smudge. And smudging is sort of like, imagine with sculpting, when you use a smudge, you're sort of like, it, this, the clay is bumpy and rough. All you're doing with the smudge brush is you're smoothing it out. You're just smoothing it out. And, and you should only smudge whenever you're trying to smooth out things. Or if you think that the detail, the grittiness, the grunginess, uh, the, the unpredictable dust around is kind of getting in your way visually and mentally, you can sort of smooth those out a bit with your smudge in sort of controlled bursts to really sort of help sort of get that out of your way, out of your way visually, so that you can focus on creating whatever it is you're trying to, to do. <clears throat> so that's sort of sculpting. And again, if you have any questions, uh, please either save them, type them up now, maybe you'll help, you'll help you remember them, um, uh, or ask, and maybe someone in chat right now would be helpful enough to try and explain it if I've already gone over it and you kind of knew here at the moment. So hopefully that helps with the whole sculpting mentality. Next is values. I'm going to keep working on this thing just because it's here. I think it's the only thing on this layer. Yeah. Now, again, you want to make sure your eraser is the same brush as your brush because like I said, it has that feel of uni of uniform, uniformity. Is that it? Uniformity. I think it's uniformity. So, for example, I'm brushing. You'll see the dust, the crackles, the and and the reason I really love this brush so much is because it has these these gritty bits, these crumbs almost. So, for example, if you're if you're even drawing with graphite or you are using charcoal and you're drawing, every time you draw. The charcoal gets laid out on the canvas of the paper, sure, but also little bits will break off of the charcoal and just kind of get on the page. And over time, they sort of accumulate to form these random just clouds of just dust. And oftentimes, if you if you if you touch or mark them whenever you're drawing and you stuff, it'll it'll leave marks on the page in the canvas. And so I, I really appreciate how even the eraser. The eraser behaves the exact same as the brush, where it leaves those lines and those grooves and those crumbs and those and those little little bits, you know. So on the topic of values, this is in with charcoal right now in the charcoal phase, we're doing black and white. It is suggested, and, and this is just a suggestion, you can totally do this with colors. But I would say some of these brushes behave strangely with colors. I will warn you. Again, chaotic, 
crazy hard to predict things really help this whole process and we'll get into that after values so maybe you'd like it maybe um, but with black and white that's pretty much the, the, the salt and it doesn't have to be black and white like if we take the black background color we can darken it up to help ease your eyes a little <laughs> uh, but right now we're literally just drawing with black ink and erasing the black ink this is a transparent this is a transparent layer. It's it's literally just black ink with erasing on it. And that's usually how I start each of my pieces. I'm going to brighten this back up so it's easier to see. Sorry if you're in a very dark room and you're going, oh. <laughs> so dealing with values. Values are the relationship between light and and dark. It's the easiest way to describe it. I'm sure there's a better way, uh, but that's one of the easiest ways I've always had to think about it. So because you're dealing almost strictly with lights and darks uh, in this process, you're going to have to think uh, a little extra on just keeping your values under control. Which means... <clears throat> And thankfully, like I said, this is all just black and white. So you don't have to worry about colors because once you have colors in the mix, the colors have their own values. So that'll mess with everything also. Uh, but if you mess with this in just black and white, um, they'll have, it'll just make dealing with the values just much easier. Sorry, I'm scratching my leg. So because you're dealing with just pure values anyway, it should make things a little easier. But when you want to color it later on, you're going to have a few new challenges you might not have seen coming. But they're not that difficult and they're pretty simple to sort of overcome as long as you figure out the best way for you. I use gradient maps when I color them, but we'll get into coloring a little later. So after values, chaos. This is this is the, the, the bread and the butter. This is how I make the majority of my my grittier darker horror like pieces not even horror just just any kind of like if you look at my pieces and you go wow that that looks so cool it's it's all gritty or even oil painty or you know whatever you want to say it i use chaos as best as i possibly can um this this goes in kind of hand in hand with how you look at clouds because you can have two people standing shoulder to shoulder and if you've heard me say this before you know what i'm going to say you can have two people standing shoulder to shoulder looking up at the exact same cloud and they'll see probably two separate things and even if they see, both see a duck or whatever in their minds their their mental pattern recognition will see the duck slightly different that's what we're using here and that's sort of a um almost like a muscle it's it's just connections in your brain so to refine those and make it easier for you you just have to practice and I know people hate that word <laughs> but it's true <clears throat> so when I say chaos I don't know what I'm drawing I know roughly what I want but it it there's no actual like idea in my head as to what I want yet it's it, I don't know what it's supposed to look like I have the brushes nice and big so they have these giant sort of clouds and you might see me do like refined shapes but it's it's all pretty random. I let the brushes surprise me. That's the biggest bit here. It's the biggest takeaway. I let the brushes surprise me. We're dealing with just chaos. Hard to control texture brushes. When they clump together, they form uh, their own patterns. That's your brain will just pick up on. So while I'm drawing this shape, you might start to see something. You might go, oh, wait, hang on, hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I don't know what he's drawing, right? And you actually might be right. I really don't know what I'm drawing, but if I start this thing, I mean, later down the line, I, I might know what I'm going to draw, but I have I have no actual idea how I'm about to go about doing that. You know, I, I leave it up sort of to chance. Not really to chance. I, I, I have an idea where I kind of sort of push my my chaos 
in a various direction. Not quite sure how I'm going to pull it off, but because my brain is pretty good at seeing patterns by now, I'm able to pretty quickly figure out what I want them to look like, what I want this thing to be. So does anybody have any guesses as to what I'm drawing? Do you often undo strokes or do you work with every stroke that hits the paper? Uh, it really depends. Oftentimes I'll undo strokes if it really gets in the way, but because I'm trying to utilize chaos, I usually leave it and I'll erase it and I'll undo isn't really needed. But if it like, if I, if I like slip that ruins everything I'm trying to work on. So I'll just undo that. But if I'm like, you'll see there's a bunch of craziness going on right here. I would much rather just erase it and refine a shape. You know? Does that make sense? Skull left? Well, yeah, I mean, that one's pretty obvious by now. I've already started working on that chaos, but I meant the right image. Like, what is this? <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, so that's that's chaos. Chaos is useful with everything. Not just, like, heads. I'm making a lantern fish. Actually, yeah, Mom was right. <laughs> It's called an angler fish, but yeah, that's actually really impressive. Momo here, by the way, in chat is actually a very, very good artist. So she's she's a well-practiced, well-oiled machine when it comes down to to pattern recognition and the visual stuff. <laughs> but yeah, like that's 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 how I would start a uh, angler fish, and I would it's rough draft, just started kind of stuff. But you would you you know you would use your pattern recognition recognition there we go a little enunciation and you would refine it and sculpt like we were talking about you would push some details in and you would get your eraser and you would take some details away and you might try and refine it even more by having like actual details like lines we can darken this stuff up. I mean, we can continue on this fish. And it's not really a very good angler fish. I, I don't even remember what an angler fish looks like. I would have to actually pull up references, which I would require any of my, quote, students to do. This was like, I don't know, it might be a swamp thing. Who knows? But yeah, it, the basic idea of an angler fish. Sorry if that annoyed anybody. <laughs> yeah, it could be a fish helmet. Exactly. So that's that's chaos. So now... Halfway, Tusky Raider, halfway through this, a little little bit of ours, now we ask the questions. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them now. Now's a great time. And if you're watching this after the stream, a lot of these questions are might, might be questions you have. And if we don't cover these questions, I would highly recommend you leave comments down below asking those questions, and hopefully me or someone else will be able to answer them. So if you had questions, I remember some somebody had some questions earlier. Like, how do we start these things? How do we continue any of that stuff? There's a bit of a delay, so excuse me. Uh, is it all still with Old Beach? Yes. Right now, we're just still using Old Beach. But we're going to use the Lara Puna Smudge. I like it nice and big. And that will help us sort of make the... Gritty bits, a little less, a little less gritty, which is very useful when you're doing when you're doing smudge stuff. That really helps your values and your value control. Because not everything is black and white, right? The, like for example, there's a bit of gray here. I got that gray by putting down some black and smudging out. Like you'll notice that that black just turned into a gray smudge. There was a question earlier about canvas size, if it mattered. No, it didn't really matter. It, I've always said, try to create a canvas for the end result. So if you're making a, a background, like a wallpaper, or something you want to be printed, think of the dimensions of that end result. So if the print is going to be 8 by 12 or whatever, um, try and make a canvas about 8 by 12. And I would suggest at least 300 DPI, PPI resolution 
uh, depending on whatever program you're using. DPI is dots per inch. PPI is pixels per inch. In digital terms, PPI is, is what it should be. DPI is meant for printers because printers, a lot of them put dots. That's what that is. Any tips on background? Uh, that's really up to you. And I know that's not very helpful. Background is a huge, huge, huge topic that is very subjective. So it really, really, it's like, it's like, hey, how do I draw? That's a big topic, you know? There are questions really about, ah, we already talked about that. So now let's use one of our other brushes. Let's use, not Laura Puna, let's use, oh, there we go, Nico Rule. Make sure the brush and the eraser are the same. Now, like I said before, this is my sort of refinement brush. And what we're going to do is flip the canvas, which is very important. I personally flip the canvas to make sure that it's easier for my hand to, uh, like, I'm a right-handed guy. So naturally, my hand likes to do that. So if I've got a curve like this, what I'm going to do is flip the canvas to make the curve easier for me. So I can do it easier in one stroke, easier and you know, just faster, more efficient, better looking, whatever. But it's also good to flip the canvas also just to, to see visually. Because your, your brain is used to seeing things one way while you work on it. So a few 10, 30 minutes, maybe an hour into working on something, flip the canvas and work on that that way for a bit. It's almost like when you say you want a fresh pair of eyes on a, on a piece of work that you're doing. This is a way digital artists can give themselves a fresh pair of eyes. And traditional artists would actually use a mirror for this. Uh, there's a streamer. Um, oh, what's his name? I can't remember now. Peppo. There we go. Gregory Peppo. <clears throat> and he has a, a little hand mirror, like a big mirror about that big. And what he does is he's drawing. He does traditionally as a camera point at it. And he'll hold the mirror up like this. And he'll look at it. And he'll see, you know, a reverse image of this just so he can, like, figure out a battle plan and see if he's messed up anything because when your brain's used to looking at something in a certain way it's messed kind of everything up because it might be awesome to you but then like you show somebody else who isn't used to looking at it and they're going to go wow that's kind of weird and you'll notice these things when you flip it so now we're using Nico rule and we're just going to add some refinement we're going to make this thing weird again I'm sorry if you like to do nice cute things I like to draw weird things. I'm, 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 I kind of apologize, but I kind of don't. <laughs> now, you'll see me probably undo a lot more frequently when I'm doing details. And we don't have to worry too much about silly things like, I don't know, if that happens. Because we have the other tool we utilize, the smudge, because I like to use my beautiful Larapuna smudge brush. It still maintains chaos and that gritty sort of canvas texture. Speaking of canvas texture, let's use Plim. <clears throat> now, Plim is, is, uh, is really, uh, like, it doesn't hold, it doesn't pull punches. Plim the, the dots and stuff it puts down, if you zoom in, that's like, that's black. Like this dot right here, that's black. That's, so the stuff it does, it, it, it value control with plims is, is pretty, pretty hardcore. So you, it's best if you like lower the opacity of the brush to give yourself a little wiggle room, I would suggest. But when you lightly kind of draw with plim, and you'll, you'll hear me like abbreviate plimsoll it adds a, ca a canvas texture, which is one of the reasons I really love it. So sometimes you'll see I'll add sort of like canvassy effects around the subject. And that, while I'm working, sort of helps solidify in my head, okay, I'm drawing, I'm, I'm using charcoal stuff on a, on a canvas. It really, it really helps sort of like mentally sell it, making a more immersive drawing experience in my opinion. For me, for little old me. I'm gonna erase with Plim, and again, it adds that canvas texture, which is really nice. 
But again, also it doesn't pull any punches. But thankfully, we do have the smudge brush. Which also has a canvas texture to it. So while you're working with your chaos, creating a basic just idea of what you want in your head, you are refining, like sculpting, a piece that in, in this charcoal technique, in, the, in these charcoal styles, these texture brushes. And people can't read that, so there we go. <clears throat> I'm going to make this thing weird. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see. How to draw a pen plus paper leaves mark on paper, styles tab leaves mark on tablet. It's that simple. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a meme I was posting earlier, just for kicks. Does anybody have any other questions? Speak your piece. Now's your chance. This is the question and answer segment. Feel free. I'll go on a rant if I get a good question and that kind of sparks a thing like we just did. But I'll, I'll, I'll further explain, but this is your chance. This this is right here. This is your moment. I'm, I'm putting you on the spot, and I'm sorry about that. But if you've had any questions like how I would go about making something, if I haven't answered them already, this is a wonderful opportunity for some of y'all. Hopefully I've got everything covered pretty good. I got the brushes, the sculpting, the values, chaos. I'm not entirely sure if there's anything else that helps work on the traditional kind of stuff. With these tools, why someone to get into selling prints? Uh, that's not quite a charcoal topic, but um, there's a lot of great print on demand services like InPrint or Redbubble if you're into that. I'm not a big fan of Redbubble, but you know they do it. And um, you know, so if you make a, a design, you could put it there on those stores and link it and they'll sell it to it fine. Unless you want to handle it all yourself. <clears throat> How do I produce certain effects with charcoal drawing like wetness gloss? For, or, oh, let's see. Gloss and wetness, you're going to need a lot of smudging. So let's actually do that here. So with wetness, let's go my baby old beach. Nice. With wetness and gloss, every for just starters, when you're doing charcoal stuff, everything you do affects the values because in the black and white phase, that's all it is. Everything you touch will affect the values, which includes the values of wetness or, or moisture or water or liquid of any kind. Now, when you think about water, what do you got? You think about maybe like a, a raindrop or a bubble or something on a table, for example. Everything, everything has values. Including water, which is see-through, but <laughs> it bends light in a strange way. And that's sort of the entire point. Values are all about light. So that makes things a little easier for us. If you're wanting to make a Something that bends light, it follows the same rules as everything else. That light affects. So we're just going to add our base values first. And right now it's gritty. Doesn't look moist, doesn't look glossy, right? But we're going to start our smudge adventure. With something glossy and something moist. You're going to be doing a lot of smudging because the whole point of smudging is to, to ease out the values and make things more smooth. And with stuff like moisture, the way it just behaves and bends light around it. Let's make this nice and proper. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Good enough. <laughs> More nice shape that's nice and soft. Just the way it bends light around it, it, it's very soft by just default. So all it really is, is just value control. Now, <clears throat> after you're done putting stuff on, taking stuff away, like sculpting. 
next step after that, I would suggest, is to add highlights, which is also something you do in charcoal, typically, but it's usually not with charcoal. Usually there's a like a highlight kind of pin. So for example, with highlights, we just grab white. And because it's a white background already, uh, you won't really see <laughs> the same unless I change the color of the background, like so. Now we smudge some more. Does this answer your question? I hope it does. And you, I would suggest actually smudging with like a softer brush, because like you have access to everything, essentially. I love to sell art. Uh, da, 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 da. That's a topic for another day, Pedro. I'm sorry. Uh, I just want to say your videos made me grab a display. Oh, nice, nice, good, good, good. So, are there any other charcoal technique, brush, texture kind of questions? Again, now it's time to shine. I'll probably go off on a tangent about it. How do you work on figure? Do you start lightly and darken as you go? That is part of chaos when you're making a figure. <clears throat> I'm gonna do something that's gonna piss some people. Actually, no, I'm not. I don't wanna piss anybody off. I was gonna just erase this, but. <laughs> I'm like, ah, what? No, all right. So, in drawing this, you want, like I said, chaos. Implement chaos everywhere you go. Whenever you are going to start a thing, uh, a person, a pro uh, subject, whatever, chaos is, is your baby. I like to start with the head personally. So, I just make a kind of a shape. And then keep that brush nice and big. And just keep proportions in mind. And then slowly, you'll see the patterns start to emerge. Right now, all I'm doing is I'm putting this weird shadowy silhouette. And I don't really know what I'm going to draw with it. All I know is it's a shadowy silhouette. but slowly you'll be able to refine this more and more into an actual, probably a person that's running. <laughs> Let's actually refine this just a bit. Again, use the same eraser as you've got brush. You might hear me tap a bit. I'm not using any music or anything. This is just a quick little doodle, but. Slowly, you'll probably start to see patterns emerging on your own. And if I do something like that, you're gonna be like, oh no, I had it, but then ah, uh, you just did something else. I don't know what he's doing now. So, does this answer some questions, I hope? You want to implement chaos everywhere you go, every time you create a piece, until slowly you start to see sort of your own, you know, details and patterns in your head. I saw somebody uh, talk about metal. And we're actually gonna be doing a little bit of metal right now. The metal is about the same is how I do metal anywhere else. It's all about values and how light works around it. Just like that. And so metal will have these, these various sheens that help sort of sell the idea of metal, right? I see what your brain is seeing along with you. Yeah. <clears throat> Have you sculpted in your past? I've sculpted a little bit, but not much. 
Na más. All right, anybody else got any questions? Hopefully that answered your, your question about the figure thing. Does that work out? Probably hard to see. There we go. Those are more interesting to look at at the moment. <clears throat> uh, what do you think the upload will be since I got here really late? I'll just, it'll, it'll be uploaded pretty soon after the whole thing's done, which it might actually look like it's closely getting close to being done. If we're running out of questions and we covered pretty much all these topics and how to, oh, so yeah, and recap. What we did was we started, um, what do we start with? We started with brushes, sculpting, values, and chaos. We've covered the different brushes that we use for these techniques. Uh, Old Beach, Nika Rule, Larapuna, Plimsoll. And then we covered how pushing the detail forward and taking some detail away sort of makes the, the, uh, the subject, right? And in the va you know, doing all that because you're doing it black and white it adds just you have to worry about value control because you're literally just dealing with values uh, you don't have to worry about color yet you can add color later which for example will show like here or here that started this one in charcoal I think we're good after that and then there was a the whole chaos situation where because these are texture brushes and they're very hard to control you just use chaos theory to a point you know you draw with chaos and they'll help you create pretty much anything how can i make uh, my piece stand out with the different textures without it looking the same that's hard it's a hard question for example let's look at this this all See, the reason it's a difficult question is because you kind of want a level of uniformity, you know? It's good to mix mediums and, and uh, techniques and other ways of doing stuff, uh, but all in all, you do want it to all sort of communicate with itself, you know? And right now, everything sort of communicates pretty well, but blending and values are going to be your biggest help. So you'll notice the uh, bottom, the bottom, like the the flappy part of this woman's like robe where it turns into like green cloud of poison or whatever, uh, stands out really well from like the face on the far side over there of like the head thing. That's because that's dark and then it, you know the other one has a bit of light to it, you know? Does that make sense? Values is how you sort of differentiate, differentiate, differentiate the different, like where things are. Value control, value control, values, very important. Muy importante, huge. So then of course you add the color and stuff later if you want color in your piece, doesn't have to be. A lot of charcoal stuffs, people used to seeing black and white. But adding color to your stuff is just different blending modes, usually. <clears throat> Does that answer all y'all's questions? Are we good? Would you say this is a successful, helpful seminar discussion lecture situation i want to try and make this as, as useful uniform and stuff but i also don't want to have any bloat you know extra excess oh cloth let's see how do you do cloth okay so if you look here great example I'm using the iPad Air, like 10.5 or whatever. 
the way you do cloth is like honestly it deserves its own tutorial which i do plan on getting around to but cloth again like everything else is just details and values so i'm gonna flip this around real quick come on it's sort of a big file So because there's chaos involved and it's sort of like pattern recognition with clouds, right? If you know how cloth behaves, that's going to help you a lot. <laughs> but erasing and drawing with the same brush It's going to be very important for you, as well as blending. Because cloth uh, can be pretty gritty, but it also can be pretty smooth. Depending on how well the weave is woven. <laughs> and just, you know, if you're doing charcoal stuff, it's it's... It's good, I think, to also incorporate as chaotic of work as you can. <laughs> but that's just my that's my style of things. So I'll also like usually have threads and stuff kind of hanging up. And then if you really wanted to do extra points, you add a hem, which is sort of like a little railroad track situation that you kind of blend out like that. Is that helpful? Hope so. The chain around the cloak? No, the chain's pretty simple. That's about as basic of a chain as you get, I think. Are we good? Are we good? Solid? If we're good, we might have to call it here. Making sure we got everything covered. Our work is amazing. Find your channel two years ago. Great. Glad to help. Glad to help. So. Seeing as we covered pretty much everything we need to, thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate you coming by here. Uh, feel free to watch this whenever you need, uh, and it covers just useful tips and tricks for not only Procreate, but also Photoshop, Krita, Clip Studio, whatever it, program you like to use. Uh, the brushes behave differently on Procreate than any other program I've ever found so far, so there is a little bit of that to keep in mind, but it's not insurmountable. And you'll just have to learn how the brushes are behave, or are behave, behave in whatever program you're using. Got it? Uh, aside from that, keep in mind sort of like the idea of sculpting with the, the brushes and uh, value control, which uh, value control is honestly another huge several videos worth of information because values are, oh, they're so important. I'm constantly still practicing values as we speak and every piece I do. Now the chaos bit, I actually have an entire video about that. It's called blank canvas. It's one, it's also one of my tutorials. It's uh, like tan with red and stuff on it. And I go into how to use chaos and pattern recognition and how to sort of create something from nothing. So if you're curious about how to do that, I would recommend watching that video. Uh, but that's about it for Procreate and charcoal-like stuff. So thank you all so much for coming by. Feel free to leave a like if you enjoyed it, found it useful, helpful, or entertaining. And I will see you all next time. I might actually do more of these sort of like lecture streams because I want them to be like, I, I want a solid, like good, good, solid tutorial, but I also want the ability to sort of interact and ask frequently asked questions that pe I might find useful, that people might find useful. It might come to the video. Have a good rest of your night. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate you all. Appreciate you all very much. Let me know, by the way. Let me know. Leave a comment or something. Leave, let me know if you like these because I'll do more of them if you do. If I get if I get shown that you all enjoy these, I'll, I'll, I'll make more for sure. For sure. Absolutely. Just super unique. I'm glad. Like, I... I, this might get me in trouble. I'm not a big fan of art school or like higher education art schools. Not the biggest fan. I'm a fan because they're awesome, but I'm not a fan because they're way too expensive. <laughs> here, here, it's expensive.
other places are just probably probably fine maybe expensive over there too but you know here they can get a little ridiculously expensive and so if people are learning basic stuff or trying to work on self-taught art school is a scam yeah right listen to momo okay i'm not kidding she's an amazing artist so if she's saying the same thing i'm saying and you like my work you, hey it's just it's just something to keep in mind i'm not saying you won't get anything out of it you definitely will get great stuff out of art schools but they're really expensive let's keep that in mind so i would like to do more of these structured streams of art stuff talking about techniques talking about brushes talking about how to do something i might do an entire next stream about cloth because that could be an entire huge stream on its own truth be told momo also does art streams by the way she does things like character design cool stuff like that so if you like to learn about character design or or drawing various forms and figures she's she's your amazing content creator she does all kinds of great work and she streams all the time here on youtube i believe i've seen a few and they're adorable and amazing at the same time badass so, uh plan to do some reviews as well actually now that you mention it i've been really wanting to get there's a there's a tablet a huyan that is like 40 bucks a 40 dollar tablet which is nice and all but like it's a real tablet and you could hook it up to your pc like most tablets or macs but also your phone i want to make a full piece like like one of my pieces i want to make one of my pieces on my phone so if i get that and i get it and i, I try it out and i, I check because there's a lot of free phone apps for drawing by the way i want to draw a full piece on my phone and test out a uh, very affordable tablet that people could get into if they're if they're really looking at. So I might make one of those kind of reviews. But aside from that, there's really not that many reviews I would really worry too much about. <clears throat> we stream together. I would love that. That'd be great. So again, thank you all so much for coming. I'm sorry if this outro was a little long and drawn out. I appreciate you. I'm just trying to gauge in I'm trying to gauge interest. <laughs> so I'll see you all next time. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. Bye-bye. <laughs>